Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Panzer 38 Nur Art. It's a tier 4 German light tank. It's located on the northeast spawn of Arctic region under the command of Heimblood 76 of the SGI clan. Well, I think you could say there's some, a bit of naughty behaviour right at the start of this game. Look at this. Heimblood has actually run that Panzer S-35 off his track and then the Panzer 38 has decided to, uh, S-35 decided to ram him. So now the Panzer S-35 can't get a high calibre and then Heimblood starts playing with him, trolling him again. Um, so it's extremely bad behaviour by Heimblood. I'm not happy about this at all being in a video because it actually shows how bad Heimblood is. Well, he's gone and exposed himself to the enemy. Uh, luckily, that Panzer Acton Nur Art didn't actually see him. Now, Nur Art means state-of-the-art tank. In fact, what they did is they took one of the Czech Panzer um, or Leipniz Tank 38s, which were now known by the German name of the Panzer Acton T, and they played around with it, put a better engine in it, made it slightly smaller, made it faster and what is what is he doing yeah he's really um not playing this very well at the moment but anyway um they actually played around with the tank and made it faster much faster the standard Panzer Acton ICT would do 42 kilometers now this thing will do 64 so they massively increased the speed but they did so at the cost of the armor signal range and its ability to traverse so um, it may be fast, but it's also uh, fairly um, only fast in a straight line, not turning. So, uh, yes, you, you have the advantages that you might have from a, um, a wheelie in that you can go very, very fast, but you can't turn. And so your enemies can get you if, if you have to turn, you can't because you have to slow down to take the corners and that's when the enemy nails you. When he's decided to take this way down, you can see the Panzer... S35 that uh, he um, was tussling with earlier has gone down the other side and he's actually in encountered a couple of enemy tanks and he's engaging them. We've just been spotted. I'm pretty sure it's some enemy tanks up ahead that's seen us. And in fact, he's just got hit by a B1 on the enemy team. And of course, he can see these guys here. And I'm pretty sure that they were seeing him as well, or at least some of them were. Now, he does make some elemental uh, mistakes here in the way he plays. Firstly, he gets shot by the B1, which he shouldn't have needed to. He does get one back there. You notice those rocks just in front of you. Notice how the rocks continue as the vehicle approaches. That means you can shoot through the rocks, actually, because basically they're, they're, not in, they're not obstructions as per the, uh, the game. So one of those lesser-known facts on the glacier map, if you go up to the center line, um, you can actually shoot through the snow. I know most people don't actually understand it or have never seen it unless they've actually done it themselves, but it is possible to shoot through the snow. It's almost like it acts like grass, you know, grass on some maps, you can actually shoot through grass because the outline appears. And so, yes, you can get shots on the enemy. Well, he's managed to kill the B1, but there's a lot of enemy tanks just around the corner and he, they are actually encountering one of our tanks, the Sahan Riano, and he's blocking them from moving any further. That's an m 8 one The Sahan Riano is actually suffering at the moment. Um, we could go out there to do something, but he just spotted this T-28. So if we did go around the corner, that T-28 might actually try to engage us. But what I think is annoying is that Heimblood just ignores what he could do, which is to go around the corner and help his teammate, because the Sahariano has just been killed. Instead, he returns to the cap area uh, after other players were calling for to protect the cap. And um, we're now four down on the enemy. Okay, he sees the BT-7 up ahead, and he says he's going to cover him or help him. BT-7s, boosted the tanky, which means fast tank in Russian, um, were a, quite a common tank that the the Russians made, but not very good because they don't have much in the way of armor. Uh, of course, they're the ones using the Cunningham suspension system, which basically this tank actually uses. Similar suspension system. 
and it's the same suspension system you find on the Hetzer. Now, interestingly, he's not actually in the bush. Although he does have that twigs in front of him, they weren't really protecting him at all. And it looked like one of his reference points, the front one, may have been out or exposed. But he wasn't spotted, so we can assume that he managed to get away with that. Mainly because the B1 doesn't have a great view range. Well, what he's actually decided to do here, I do agree with, because he's actually got closer, but he did get spotted by that Panzer 3 Ausrung E, who managed to get very close to our M8A1. He's putting rounds into the guy, and there's an AMX-38 there as well, and he's bounced two rounds from that guy. And he's pulled back. The Panzer, he did get the AMX-38, by the way, so he's got one, uh, two kills now. The B1 and the AMX. Now, that Panzer 3, Alsung E, pulled back after he saw uh, that he was here. So, probably doesn't want to engage, even though he might be an inexperienced player, but he's got plenty of hit points, so he could still engage. But he's hanging back. Of course, he might also see the fact that Heimblut does have a lot of hit points. So uh, he probably reasoned to himself, if I engage a guy with more hit points than me, I'm going to go down, so I'm going to pull back. Now, the booster the tanky uh, has actually decided to go right down to the pass. He's knocked a tree down, and uh, at this moment, he's waiting and trying to illuminate that B1. Okay, so we're looking in that general direction. There we are. Okay, so we've got a kind of ridge line there with the snow, so we might be able to get a, an outline. Just teasing it. There it is. Okay, he's got an outline. He could possibly hit the cupola. Uh, he's got to let it dial in. One of the bad things about this five centimeter gun, which only does 70 alpha, is that it takes a long to dial in on the target. I think we can see there that, oh, he got penetrated behind by that Panzer die. But he has a lot of problems with that guy. 67 millimeters of pen and a fairly slow shell velocity. You can see that the Panzer Drei actually did go to the right spot to actually pull back that bank and, and get shots over in this direction and then move himself into a position where he can't be shot at. Now that Panzer Drei Arsalung E and this Valentine both made the same mistake. They tried to go round the corner there, right next door to the rock, and the Valentine is getting his range in, and he has got the two-pounder, or is it? No, I don't think that is the two-pounder gun. Oh, it might be. But he's gone down now, so he has been outgunned in the exchange. He traded some hit points to, to get rid of the Valentine. But yes, the um, the Valentine and the uh, Panzer Drei made a big mistake. And he's now telling the boost of the tanky to pull back, but the BT-7 didn't listen and he's gone out the game. Yes, he's he's got no defense really against the armor of that Panther Dai Al Sunungi, especially if he's got the five centimeter gun, which he probably does have. Now, yes, the mistake they've made is they're trying to go around next to the rock. What you should do is try and get into the little gully that runs around that corner and then you're in a ground depression. You can't be spotted and the enemy can creep up on you. There's the Panther guy again, knocks down a tree to try and help him self, but he fails to do so. Well, fails to help himself. I think he probably came at the tree from the wrong angle to actually make it work for him. We can still see the pop top of his turret po poking out every time he looks around the corner. Now, I have the sneaking feeling, since it's now two versus three, that he's actually waiting for somebody to arrive. He's waiting for the M8A1, who's 100% health. So he's obviously waiting for that guy. But as soon as he turns up, then obviously both of them can attack at the same time. And there's a Panzer Acton uh, Neunen uh, Zeig, just a short distance away. There you go. And he's turned up as well. But he's a one shot, so I suspect that he's probably not want to get involved. And you see, the M8A1 used the gully, managed to sneak round, but at least Heimblob managed to get a round into him. And now the Panzer Drei was 
Whilst he's distracted, the Panther guy is now looking to try and get in. There he is. Well, he gets that one into the tracks. That hit the body. One more to kill. <laughs> and he didn't need to because our M8A1 Scott got the kill shot. But we took another round from that M8A1. Now, he's obviously using the 57mm gun, which is um, uh, just over, I think it's about 70 alpha. Slightly more. And we're creeping up on him using our... Uh, our um, sneaky light tank uh, camo and look at that M8A1 he's running as fast as he possibly can he's trying to get away he's actually a good player by the way because you can see from the little blue dot that he's actually an experienced one just fluffed it up on this occasion now he's auto aiming on here he shouldn't be trying to do that because at this range and that's shell velocity he can't get an accurate hit but I'm afraid somebody else can because, yes, our M881 spots him from up on top there and shoots him. But then he gets wiped out by the Panzer Neunendreisig. I have to keep remembering that's the, the Neunendreisig for 30 million. Okay, so now he's only got that uh, Panzer Neunendreisig to kill. And with a five centimeter gun, he should be able to do that very, very easily indeed. In fact, he's gone to third person mode now. And I think he'll just find the guy, run him down and get him that way. Where are you? There he is. He's not even bothering to shoot. Hello. We've lost the track. Yes, yeah, so that's one way of fixing it. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was a second class tanker for Heimblood 76 in the Panzer 38 Nur Art. He also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills, he did get four exactly. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a fight for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle, and he also got a hand of golf for surviving the battle and received damage from at least four different enemy tanks. His win rate in that game was 5,814, which is super income standard, but I'm afraid his behavior in the game was that of a troll, and I don't think I'd want him on my team. If we look at the team scores, we can actually see that the highest damage in the game was actually that B1 down at the South Pass. He got a cool headed and high caliber for 1,946 hit points of damage. And the second highest damage in the game turned out to be the M8A1, the guy who got killed by that Panzer Neunendreisig, who got uh, 1,363 hit points. And the third highest damage turned out to be the Hetzer on the enemy team, 1,125 hit points to him. We can see that Heimblood actually got the fourth highest damage in the game at 1,031. When it came to kills, though, it was the B1 again who got five kills. Four kills went to Heimblood, and three kills went to the M8A1 and the Panzer Beast Phi. And when it came to base XP, we can see he's in second place because 745 went to the Panzer uh, S. Um, Fumpenteisig, who got 745, yeah, and 693 went to Heimblood 76, and 680 went to the Panzer Beast 5. I think the problem here is that uh, the guy that he actually had the tussle with was quite a good player after all, and so it was a pity that he then didn't support that guy later on during the game because he actually did spot and shoot a lot at the enemy at close range and also got spotting out of that as well. He fired 25 rounds, got 19 direct hits, 16 penetrations, 1,031 hit points of damage, of which 78 were at more than 300 meters. 10 hits received from the enemy, five of them were penetrations, five non-penetrations, and uh, some of those were actually shots from his own teammate. 220 hit points of damage blocked by armor, one enemy vehicle spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, 525 hit points of spotting assist. On a premium count, he actually made a profit of 16,155 credits, but he did spend an awful lot on ammunition because he was using the APCR uh, when he could have used standard ammo. He did get a 40,000 mission completion bonus out of that as well. And he took away 4,159 experience points as well, getting a bonus of 2,080 experience points. 
But what do I think about that game? Well, I think Heimblood really, he shouldn't have done what he did right at the start. He not only trolled that Panzer S-35, but uh, he also um, made that guy fire at him, which then meant that that Panzer S-35 was never going to get a high caliber, even if he did score the most damage. And that's reprehensible. But I also thought that there were mistakes he made, basic mistakes, um, in how he actually handled this vehicle, where he went, he had a perfect opportunity to shoot at the best enemy player, the B1, by going up behind him and using his gun depression of 10 degrees to actually shoot the enemy in the rear and kill all three enemy tanks that were trying to go up the South Pass. Um, and he could have taken them on, but he didn't. He saw that T28, and that T28 re uh, redeployed from the position he was in uh, at, at the moment he saw him, and he could have gone around the corner and then he would have been able to get a lot of damage on those enemy tanks uh, very, very quickly. Instead, it, by actually going to the position he did go, which is the middle bushes, halfway up, he could shoot at anyone coming from the north, from the side, or from the south pass. And he did get the kills in the end on the um, uh, AMX-38, uh, the Panzer 3 Ausrung E, and of course he got the kill on the Valentine as well. But he didn't, um, he was vulnerable to that M8A1, which was a good player who actually did remember to go down the gully at the north of that uh, area. Got to watch out for that gully because that gully is a good way of staying in defilade, in cover, as you're approaching or coming round on anyone hiding in that bush is where he was. So uh, not particularly happy about Heimblood sending in this replay. I thought about not doing it and sending it back to him saying, no, I'm not going to do a replay um, highlighting troll behavior uh, because we normally try to get those people exposed and banned from the game. So Heimblood, you're going to have to up your game. You can't do this sort of thing. You can't troll your teammates. Um, I know that some, some players do it for sheer fun, um, with their teammates when they go into a, a game they're in platoon and they decide to troll each other uh, it's okay if you go into a game with a platoon with somebody else and you troll each other that's okay because y your behavior is not affecting anyone else but if you actually do affect somebody else like that s35 driver who was good then obviously what you're doing is a detriment to the team and you could actually throw the battle by being silly so, uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave any comments you feel about Heimblog's behavior, and thank you for watching.